Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. This is the regular meeting of the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Good morning. Let the record reflect Commissioners Johnson, Soberoff, Figueroa Villa, and McLean Hill are present, and we have a quorum. Thank you. Do we have any comments on the consent item, agenda items? We have comment cards on items 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve items 1 E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and O? Yeah. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? With thanks, Aye. yes. Any opposed? Yes. Um, so uh, call, uh, call the comments for uh, the 1A. Uh, for 1A, we have Lisa Simpson followed by Michael Novick. Good morning, Matt Johnson. Good morning. Uh, I just need two minutes of your time. You know, it's, it's sad to me. It's sickening. Y'all all here, uniform or not, it's sad that these kids are dying on the streets, and y'all hold this board meeting every Tuesday knowing that y'all have no power. That's why Chief Beck can sit there with ease and don't have no, no kind of uh, feeling or emotional for these parents because there's nothing you guys can do to them. But the question is, I want to know how y'all agent provocateur, Melina Abdullah, that y'all have bring all these people here to their demise. She fights against the police, supposedly. Cynthia McLean Hill works with the police. I'm trying to figure out, how are them two friends? What do they talk about? Because if you, fight, if you work with the police and she fighting for the police, how do y'all become friends like that? How are y'all on panels with each other? Our kids is dying out here. These people that come here every week, they playing a dangerous game. They saying kids' names, taking money for our kids. None of it's going to the community. Dr. Melina Abdullah don't run the community of Los Angeles. She live in a gated community. I've never seen her in South Central, East Los Angeles, West Los Angeles. The only place she go is downtown L.A. All y'all up in here, y'all play this little circus game. You know, when I came in the beginning when my son got killed, I was upset. I was emotional. I said a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have said, but meant every word that I said. You feel me? So when I came back this time, I had to regroup and use my thinking process because I'm a very intelligent black woman. All y'all in here, everybody, y'all should all be ashamed of yourself. These kids are dying every day, and instead of y'all trying to do something to these police officers, y'all bring them to this commission board, and y'all give them awards. Y'all give them medals. By the time they retire... They gonna have a blue heart because they didn't kill so many kids. Y'all don't care about the blood that's being shed in the streets. Y'all don't care about the parents. Y'all don't care about these kids. He don't care about the kids. He got his killers on the streets that's killing these kids every day. And yet y'all come here every Tuesday and had this meeting when y'all know y'all have no power. It's not going nowhere. Nothing's never going to happen to him. Nothing's never going to happen to the officers. In 17 years, all the people they didn't kill blatantly in plain sight, so you can see, every officer been found in policy. No officer haven't been guilty. They killing us, and y'all sit up here, and it's like this is like a circus to me. Y'all approve Thank of you the murder. You feel me? Oh, I'm, my name ain't Miss Hines. See, you got the wrong person. My I'm name sorry. is Lisa Simpson. I'm sorry, Miss Simpson. My I, son been I, I dead apologize. almost a year. Matt, y'all haven't told me anything yet, and it's been almost a year. I just have a dead son. I, I apologize. You can't Mrs. apologize, but you know what I'm going to leave you with? I hope God keep blessing you guys for doing the devil's work. I am Richard Richard, and I'm never going to stop fighting. And guarantee, Charlie Beck, the three officers that killed my son, I will have a prosecution and a conviction, and they're going to be held accountable for killing my son. And I want y'all to have a blessed day. God bless you guys, and I hope God keep blessing y'all for doing the devil's work. The final you're comment fake, card on you, 1A is fake. Michael Novick. You're fake. You fake with your homegirl, Melina Abdullah. Both of y'all is fake, and y'all taking money away from these parents and their kids is dead on the street. They shouldn't have never put you on the panel because you a half-ass nigga. That. Good morning. Morning. I think it's shameful that you've killed so many people that you confuse the mother of one person you killed for the mother of another. Um, shameful. 
Um, I, I, you know, I, I haven't been here for a while, but I see that the, uh, the same order is up. Uh, you have about $150,000 of donations that you're considering for the LA Police Department again this week. I urge you to uh, accumulate the amount of money that week after week you say should be going to the LAPD and that you advise all these foundations and charities and so on that they need to put the money into the community, into serving the children of this community and, and in meeting their needs so that the LAPD is not in constant cut conflict and contradiction and uh, criminalizing poverty, criminalizing people because they're black or brown. <clears throat> this particular one uh, is an 80-some thousand dollar grant for so-called community policing, and as I've told you before, uh, in the Police Chief Magazine and other uh, uh, areas, uh, the people who advocate for so-called community-oriented policing describe it as uh, the domestic equivalent of psychological operations in the military. Community policing is not an answer to the militarization of the police. It's part of the militarization of the police because it, it sees the people uh, as potential enemies and tries to control the thinking of the, uh, the uh, uh, enemy and, and the people. That's the nature of uh, uh, psychological operations in the military, and it's the nature of psychological operations by the L.A. Police Department. So this particular grant, in particular from the Police Foundation, I think is outrageous. I think you should turn it down. I don't expect you to listen to me because you never have. You never rejected one of these things. It's always a rubber stamp. After you listen to the uh, pu uh, public comment, you then take your votes. It's always unanimous. Uh, you're like the Politburo, you know. Uh, whatever uh, the uh, commander here uh, wants is what he gets. But it's time to fire Charlie Beck. So um, to, fo as, 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 uh, to follow on Commissioner Soboroff, I'd personally like to thank the donors to the Police Foundation for this very important implicit bias training that we are doing for the entire department that is referenced in item 1A. Do we have a motion to approve item 1A? And a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Do we have comments on item 1B? We have two comment cards on item 1B. First, Tut Hayes, followed by Mr. Jenkins. $32,000 to paint and strip a helicopter. Of course you can see how tattered that copter is at 500 feet. Who cares how ratty looking the paint job is on a helicopter at 32 grand? This is insane. It's a fire department helicopter that can be now a police helicopter. What? A fire department helicopter needs to be painted as a police helicopter so it doesn't look like a fire helicopter. Sir. Sure. Any helicopter does not deserve $32,000 to be stripped and painted. We just lost two cars. I'll be talking about that later on. I don't know how much of those, uh, those cars cost, but replacing those cars for whatever amount of money it takes, that's a worthwhile investment. But no helicopter deserves that kind of attention. This is just squandering money. If they had no paint on them, guess what? They could still fly. So, who can justify, I haven't looked at this. I'm gonna look at and see what you have to say. Who can justify paying $32,000 to strip and paint anything? Mako, who can justify that kind of money to do this kind of work? Okay, so I would su suggest that you do not vote yes on this. You look at this, appraise it, and recognize that when they hear what I'm saying on the air, some people might say, yeah, you know, Hayes might have an idea there. 32 grand to strip and paint a helicopter is absurd, ridiculous, squandering money. Mr. Jenkins? That's okay, do we have a motion? We have a motion to approve item 1B. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. 1C? 1C, we have Mr. Tut Hayes. <clears throat> what we need is a LAPD Cadets Corps Protective League to do this to suggest somehow that these kids could take two cars from adults, 
train professional civil, civic servants and police officers and keep it for a week and drive around the street and never at fault. Juvenile delinquents. Well, no, they're not juvenile delinquents. What they are are ch children who have been led into delinquency by adults. Trained chimpanzees could have taken these cars the way the LAPD had them set up. You go in and you say, I'm Sergeant such and such and check out a car. And the chief says, if you're an adult on the street and you've encountered young people that look too young to be an adult officer, let us know. Shouldn't they have found that out from the police staff, civilian and police, who saw these kids come in and check out these cars and check out these vests and check out these tasers? This is shades of Rampart, narcotics division locker, where any cop could come in and check out all the narcotics they want no questions asked until the thing blew up. So you got to tell me how it is a 15-year-old can come into any police agency and check out anything at all, let alone a car. So I would suggest to you parents, don't let this department shackle your children with this abuse. It's adult abuse. It's contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Chimpanzees, as they say, could have checked out these cars. On 1D, we have Mr. Tut Hayes. Mr. Hayes, you want to uh, go ahead and make your comment on, one, on 1D? I'm sorry. Uh, he was the only card for 1C. Do you want to? We have a motion to approve item 1C. Motion to approve item 1C. And we have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so 1D. 1D is only one comment card, and that's Mr. Tetty's. I'm requesting the parents who might have, or the uh, um, guardians who might have student children enrolled in the cadet program, do not allow their children to be harassed or persecuted by this. The adults who allow this thing to happen or occur should be fully responsible for whatever cost that involved and also be put on some kind of punishment for allowing it to occur. Um, they should pay the full cost. And believe me, parents, your children are going to be blamed for doing something that children do. Let's understand, this was an enticement of a soy. I'm pretty certain of that. This kind of enticement is really called, um, uh, what is that uh, term? Um, Entrapment? Yeah. This was entrapment. It was so loosely organized, so open to be abused, that it's entrapment. Somebody said, kids, go joyride. And not only that, did they call up the chase? No, they didn't call up the chase until there were two crashes. But we understand that what they do in many instances call up the chase because there might be a crash because of the erratic driving of the persons they're re pursuing. Well, they pursued these kids into trees. Fortunately, they were not hurt, not injured. So I am very much concerned about this because adult supervision should have prohibited it. There should have been some kind of construct where this could not occur. Now, I don't really want to be anywhere near any kind of teenager for any purpose whatsoever. That's not my realm. But I would suppose that the police department personnel can know a kid from a sergeant, okay? And they didn't. Do I have a motion to approve so item moved. 1D? And a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. We are now on number two on the agenda, the regular agenda items. 2A department's report dated June 14th, 2017, relative to the ethics enforcement section quarterly report, first quarter 2017. Okay, before we go to 2A, do any of my uh, fellow commissioners want the reports on 2B, C, or D? Okay, do I have a motion to no. approve items 2B, C, and do we have any comments on those items? Uh, 
no, we only have a comment card on 2A. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve items 2B, C, and D? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, let's go to item 2A, please. We have uh, Gina Di Pietro. Well, we're going to do the report first. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Captain Tim Norquist. I'm the Commanding Officer of Eth uh, Special Operations Division where Ethics Enforcement Section is housed. Great. During the first quarter, we conducted 36 tests, 18 integrity tests, and 18 complaint intake tests. Of the 18 integrity tests, there was one failure, a 6% failure rate. That compares to a 4% failure rate last year and a 9% failure rate over the past five years. We had no pass with comments. Of the 18 complaint intake tests, we had no failures. That compares to a 12% failure rate, both for last year as well as the previous five years. Two intake tests resulted in pass with comments. This concludes my overview of the first quarter report. Thank you. Any questions? Call the card. Yeah. Uh, we have Gina Di Pietro. Good morning, Commissioners. I did grow up with German Shepherds, so uh, hearing some German is not so awful for me. But anyway, um, and I am German too, as a matter of fact, and Italian. Uh, I just wanted to say that I think the LAPD is doing a great job, and I think it's fantastic that you conduct uh, exercises whereby officers are uh, tested to see how well they do. And uh, on the street, I, I really see officers doing amazing work and more importantly, when I look around at police officers, I see men and women in Kevlar vests. That means they're putting their lives on the line every day to keep us safe. And I think that should be acknowledged, and it means the world to me. It warms my heart to know that you are keeping us safe here in Los Angeles, and I wanted to thank you. So thank you very much, LAPD. Any other comments on this item? No more comment cards. Do I have a, a motion to approve item 2A? So moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Number three on the agenda, report of the Chief of Police, Chief Beck. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. A number of things to talk about uh, today. Uh, first, I'll give an update on the uh, cadet investigation and, uh, and the steps that are being taken uh, relative to the investigation as well as uh, preventative measures. So first, a number of, um, a number of steps were taken uh, citywide in order to uh, uh, inspect the program uh, on, a, on a quick basis and, and to make sure that we had a full scope of understanding about what had occurred in, in, a, in a short amount of time. So first thing uh, that I ordered being done is I uh, stood down the two cadet posts at 77th Division and Pacific Division, uh, 77th being the primary division that was involved in the, uh, in the activities uh, under investigation. Uh, one individual from Pacific who had a strong connection to 77th uh, was also involved, but, uh, but out of an abundance of caution, we stood down the Pacific program too. Uh, while those two uh, posts are, are stood down, uh, I have directed that the command officers, the, the, one of the two captains in each division, do a one-on-one -on -one interview with each and every cadet and realizing that there's over 100 cadets in each of those posts that might, might take a, a little bit of time due to vacation schedules, et cetera. One-on-one uh, -on -one interview where they will stress uh, not only ethics but the responsibilities of being a cadet and then also uh, ask a general question about, uh, uh, about whether they have any knowledge uh, of the uh, facts uh, being investigated, and if they do, they'll be referred to Major Crimes Division, which is handling the general investigation. I've also directed that uh, both those divisions meet with all the parents uh, of, of their cadets 
and have a discussion relative to the, the actions we're taking and, and why we're, we're taking them. Citywide, uh, I ordered that over the weekend, uh, uh, command or staff officers do an inspection of all of our cadet facilities, in other words, all of the offices uh, uh, that the cadets work out of, uh, with an eye towards uh, uh, whether any inappropriate material was posted or whether there was easy access uh, to police equipment or any other issues um, uh, that, uh, that they thought were appropriate. Um, that has, uh, that has uh, been done and been conducted. We also uh, ordered a citywide audit of, uh, of all equipment that is available for checkout uh, out, of our, uh, out of our equipment rooms. Uh, that audit is underway. Uh, I will say that the audit of the vehicles has been completed and, and we have uh, no further uh, unaccounted for police vehicles. Uh, the other, the smaller items will take a little bit longer because uh, the, the nature of the items is that they get checked out and, and we'll have to make contact with all the people that were um, last uh, seen to be in position or last, the items were last checked out to. Uh, to uh, ascertain their whereabouts. So that, that might take a little bit longer, but it, it won't be uh, very long. I also directed uh, top to bottom, and I, we talked about this last week, um, a review of, uh, of the cadet requirements, cadet procedures, the, the oversight of cadets, the staffing levels that we, that, um, that we put to our cadet post for oversight, um, the check-in procedures, uh, for absolutely top to bottom review of the program, uh, with an eye towards uh, towards accountability and and making sure that uh, that our folks are doing the right thing. Then we're also doing a uh, uh, a review of our equipment checkout procedures uh, to make sure that they are adequate. I will say that on the surface, um, they are much improved over our equipment checkout procedures in the past in that they are automated and, and don't require necessarily face-to-face -face, uh, checkout procedures and there's a better um, custody chain of equipment. Uh, but they, there are some aspects of it that I think that we can uh, definitely improve on as systems. Um, and most certainly uh, the specifics of 77th Division uh, as to um, uh, lax oversight of equipment uh, can and will be improved. So uh, those, are the, those are the really Im important pieces of this uh, that are uh, underway and have been completed up until now. I've also um, ordered that at the graduation for our recruit, uh, current recruit class, which is about 400 uh, young people, uh, that is scheduled for this Saturday at Galen Center, I've also ordered that all available recruit, um, excuse me, cadets in the program will also attend that graduation. So we hope to have upwards of 2,000 uh, cadets present there. Uh, that will give me a, a chance to not only inspect all of them, uh, but also uh, to make sure that they hear uh, my message, the department's message, about two things, about their responsibilities and, and about our support uh, for the program. Uh, what I would also ask is if, if any of the commissioners are available, we, obviously we would love to have commissioners there. We're inviting all of the elected officials uh, uh, also, and uh, we hope that the uh, public and especially the media will attend. It's a great opportunity, I think, for Los Angeles to see that a 2,200-person program is not defined by the actions of a small handful and that there is tremendous value in this program in that it, it specifically um, addresses the needs of, of, of many, many inner city kids uh, for guidance, supervision, mentorship, and a sense of belonging. And I think that, uh, that uh, even though you know, we are very disappointed and uh, unsatisfied uh, with what happened over the past week, um, you know, I, I realize the value of the program, and I realize that it is that it is an important way um, for many young people in Los Angeles to um, uh, to increase their opportunities for success in later years, even if they don't become police officers. And and, man, and actually, most of them don't. Uh, but uh, but I think it prepares for life, like so many uh, quality youth programs do. So um, that's, a, that's the, the general basis of the things that are in place um, uh, department-wide on this issue. Uh, as for the specifics of the investigation, 
Um, over the weekend, we had teams of detectives uh, uh, working uh, this issue. Uh, they conducted uh, um, dozens of interviews, over three dozen interviews of, uh, of individuals that may have been involved. They've, um, uh, they have uh, um, made some significant progress in determining the scope of what happened. Uh, we have made four additional arrests of uh, 77th uh, area cadets. That brings to the total of seven. Uh, one, as I said, from Pacific and uh, six uh, from 77th. All of the arrests are relative to the taking uh, and uh, either um, operating or joyriding uh, under section 10851 of the vehicle code of, of police vehicles and then obviously the the initial arrests were also the evading charges, which of course are extremely serious. Um, you know, we are uh, uh, pressing forward with this to uh, to make sure that, that we find uh, everybody involved and, and take the appropriate steps. We've also identified a couple of occasions uh, where the young people involved are believed to have made traffic stops. Uh, there was no enforcement action that we have discerned taken in any of these traffic stops except for the detention of the individuals involved. And, there, and detectives have interviewed a couple of them. Um, no handcuffing, no use of force, no arrest, no citation. But, but the fact in and of itself that you detain somebody, of course, is a, uh, is a reduction of personal freedom and, and, and is a chargeable offense to, absent, the, uh, absent the authority to do so. So we're looking at that. Um, obviously, we have uh, discovered no um, uh, no firearms, as I said earlier this uh, earlier in the week, uh, missing that are, is connected are connected to this, and we'll continue to uh, to to look at these things in in a much much uh, broader scope, and uh, make sure that we get um, not only to the bottom of what this occurrence was all about, but also to the to the remedies that we need. Uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, before I move on, any que commission questions about that? No. no. The only thing I, I would like to say is that the, um, you know, I, I, I think the cadet program is a very valuable program for our city, yeah. and um, uh, we need to do what we can to make sure that incidents like this don't happen again in the yeah. future. But we also don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. It's a great program. This is a this is a case of a, of a few individuals making some very bad decisions. But it is not indicative at all of the of the program in general. Um, and uh, uh, I certainly have been to graduation. I've met tons of cadets over the years at lots of different events. Um, and uh, and these are these are great kids. They are all benefiting. Uh, from this uh, from this program, and I, I encourage members of the public. I, me I encourage uh, media members to go out to the graduation this weekend, and uh, and uh, I, I think it's important for all of us with this negative press that's been out there about the program that um, we continue to make sure that these kids in the program know that they're supported, and that this is not an indictment on them. It is a uh, it's a reflection of of some terrible mistakes that a few individuals have made. Let me uh, let me. Um, um, validate that and also say that of the six individuals so far that have done this i don't i don't know any of them um i hope that uh, that their future can be um surrounded um uh, in a way where where they will look back and say this was a mistake and that they they uh indeed um become really productive uh and great members of our society that made a that made a mistake. Well, I, and I thank the, the commission for those comments because that reflects uh, uh, my feeling about this. You know, I am, <laughs> as you are all uh, keenly aware, I'm very paternal about this organization, and I really feel like a very disappointed father on Father's Day this past weekend. And. And we will, uh, you know, that doesn't uh, that doesn't reduce my uh, affection for the for the, the kids involved in the program and my belief in their in in their future and their and their present. But of course, it makes me want to make sure that, uh, that that we don't expose this to the don't expose them to the opportunities again, uh, because you know uh, one of the 
one of the, the truths about young people is that they are they take inappropriate risks and they make bad judgments and 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 uh, that's the reason this program and many others like it exist is to help them with that and of course um, as a police officer and, and somebody that uh, has has worked with juvenile issues for many many years I'm, I'm acutely aware of that and it doesn't only apply to cadets it applies to uh, to all of us so so we'll we'll push forward on this and and but be assured, the commission can be assured that um, that my goal is to make uh, the program better, uh, not to reduce its effectiveness uh, out of fear of, of this incident. But but we will take the appropriate actions to make sure that this uh, doesn't occur again. And uh, recognizing that that uh, we deal with human frailty and that's that is um, that is always the burden. So so we'll push forward. With two officers, moving on, two officer-involved shootings uh, since you last met. One of them occurred on June 15th at approximately 1700 and 1750 hours when Metropolitan Division officers were conducting a parole probation compliance check on the 400 block of East 49th Street. As the occupants were exiting the resident, an individual who remained inside, later identified as Jose Rauda, uh, fired uh, a 44 Magnum pistol at the officers on the outside, uh, which re re resulted in the officers returning fire. Rauda then exited out a rear window of the residence uh, where uh, other officers were assigned in the back and immediately began firing at those officers with that same 44 Magnum pistol. The officers re returned fire there. Uh, uh, Rauda's round struck one of our um, uh, canines, Argo, a long time. Uh, canine uh, that in Metropolitan Division in the left hind leg, and Metropolitan Division um, uh, set up a containment uh, in that block uh, where a router was contained. Uh, during that search, during the search, the following search uh, for router, um, he again appeared and fired at the searching officers, uh, striking one of the uh, SWAT officers uh, in the ballistic helmet. The round did not. Uh, penetrate the helmet, uh, but uh, severely stunned uh, the officer, and uh, we, we were very, very lucky we didn't uh, didn't lose a police officer. Uh, officers again returned fire, uh, and uh, Rada was uh, eventually uh, taken into custody uh, and was uh, booked for uh, for attempt murder. Uh, 44 Magnum revolver was recovered uh, at scene. Uh, 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 the investigation is ongoing. Um, very, very dangerous situation, and, and again, we're very lucky we didn't lose uh, police officers. Second officer involved shooting occurred last night at about 11 uh, p.m., 4200 block of uh, Marahia in uh, Van Nuys. Uh, Van Nuys patrol officers responded to a 911 call of domestic violence. Uh, as they arrived, they were confronted by the suspect, who was a male, 75 years of age, uh, who was armed with a uh, kitchen knife. Uh, the officers uh, attempted to uh, uh, de-escalate his behavior, uh, but were unable to do so. Eventually, a taser was deployed, and uh, one round was fired by one of the officers. Uh, the individual was struck, taken into custody, uh, transferred to, uh, to, for medical treatment, and uh, is surviving his wound. Um, obviously, this is very, very early in the investigatory stages. I don't have uh, that much more on this one. Uh, as, and as in all officer-involved shootings, the officers will uh, be out of the field uh, uh, pending um, the 72-hour briefing uh, and uh, um, appointments with our behavioral sciences. So uh, more on, on that one later. Yesterday, I participated in a uh, press conference with uh, Senator Kevin DeLeon and uh, Eric Holder, our former Attorney General for the United States, regarding SB 54, somewhat controversial bill in law enforcement circles. Uh, I, I worked diligently uh, through Mr. Alakan and uh, Senator DeLeon's staff to, uh, to amend the bill so that it met the needs of the Los Angeles Police Department uh, as far as keeping the city safe. Uh, Senator De Leon's staff did that, uh, and we are uh, content with the bill as offered. We think that it it sends the right message about law enforcement, uh, local law enforcement, and its role 
in uh, in uh, enforcing status violations, particularly immigration status violations, uh, in that uh, we will uh, maintain our position as uh, for, as we have for the last 39 years in in not uh, enforcing civil immigration laws. Uh, no intention to change that. Uh, Senator DeLeon's bill does let us uh, allow uh, for uh, local police uh, departments to enforce uh, certain criminal aspects of, uh, of um, immigration law, where, where uh, somebody is a, a prior to Port E who has a who has a, a specified violent criminal um, convictions, and, and allows us to uh, to take action on that. It also allows us to work in task force configurations uh, with federal partners as long as immigration is not the primary um, uh, goal of that task force. Uh, it makes sure that, that we have the ability to, to communicate with our federal partners in a way that is uh, positive for, for local law enforcement. It, uh, it addressed all my issues and I, and I think it's a, a good bill and, and we're moving forward on that. Uh, lastly, uh, crime statistics, uh, I'll be really quick because uh, it's very similar to last week, although we did have a little improvement. We're at a 1.1% increase in total one part one crime compared to last year, a 2.4 increase in homicides, and a 1.6 increase in violent crime. So very incremental increases, made, made some progress on homicide this past week. I, I hope that we continue to do that. Um, and we will move forward. So far, uh, Los Angeles Police Department has recovered 2,696 guns. That's excluding buybacks. Uh, this year, that's an 8.6% increase over last year and a 25% increase over our five-year average. Uh, gang homicide is up 5.3% uh, year-to-date. Overall, gang crime is down 8.5%. Traffic collisions, about a 1.9% increase overall, uh, about a 4.8% increase in fatal traffic collisions, 109 versus 104. Uh, hit and runs are about even, but uh, fatal hit and runs are up uh, by about 10. Motor vehicle versus pedestrian is, of course, our, still our biggest concern, and that is a total of 60 fatalities year to date, which is a 36% increase over last year. Bicycle involved uh, traffic collisions are down. Uh, in particular, the serious ones, uh, uh, fatal traffic collision, bicycle collisions are down about 28%. That's five compared to seven. Sworn personnel statistics and uh, sworn and civilian, we have 9,948 uh, sworn personnel on payroll, uh, 2,840 civilians, about uh, 300 uh, reserves, and right now we have 2,172 active cadets in the program, 8,000 since the time I've been chief of police, and we're graduating, what, about 400 uh, on, 450 on, uh, on Saturday. And I, and I hope everybody will attend that graduation. And that completes my report. Thank you. We have five comment cards, starting with Michael Novick, followed by Tut Hayes and Pastor Q. Um, I was kind of shocked in the uh, chief's remarks that he seems to feel that uh, uh, quote unquote inner city youth are particularly in need of mentorship. Uh, I think it's a racist comment on his part and I think that the idea that the uh, LAPD which is a CYA organization from top to bottom is able to provide such mentorship is absurd. Uh, I, my comments about the chief are, are broader than that. Uh, people may be aware that uh, I think about it we, within the last week or so uh, the USS Fitzgerald the uh, guided missile destroyer uh, that was in the South China Sea crashed into a cargo vessel uh, right outside Japan. There were seven uh, U.S. sailors were killed. Uh, three others had to be medevaced, including the commander of the vessel. Uh, the commander of that vessel's career is over because in a paramilitary or military organization, they understand where the buck stops. It's at the top. And uh, the buck stops in the LAPD over there. So all of these errors and crimes and killings, uh, the uh, third year in a row that the LAPD is the most murderous police department in the country, uh, 
that man is responsible, and that man needs to be held responsible. The U.S. Navy understands that the commander of that ship is responsible, and the police commission has a responsibility to hold that man responsible. And you're derelict in your duty, he's derelict in his duty, and uh, I, you, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Ted Hayes. I assume the chief was joking when he said he wants to make sure the checkout procedures are adequate. Now, not once did he mention whether he passed any of his ideas on how to deal with these cassettes through, through some child psychologists. These are immature people. These are not 15 years old. I don't even think that's an adolescent. When you interrogate anyone, adults or children, that puts them under stress, have you heard? And when you do that with the kids, you pass it on to the parents, you're pushing the blame on the wrong group of people. This is a cop problem, not a kid problem, all right? Now, when I was in the Marine Corps in 1953, they outlawed mass punishment. If a guy fell asleep on guard duty, the whole company was no longer being punished by it, but it was a good idea. This is mass punishment. You say, we're going to make all the cadets come to graduation. We're going to make all the cadets do this. We're going to do one-on-one -on -one with the kids, one-on-one -on -one with the parents. Don't do that, Chief. Board of Commissioners, do not allow that to happen. Think about it. Investigate it. Determine that these are children. Kids do what children kids do. We know that. But this is outstandingly horrific to treat these kids this way. They're not to blame for anything at all. They should not be interrogated. They should not be made to do a damn thing because of this incident. Like you said, it's an isolated incident. And so let it be that, and nothing more. Don't let it spread out through the entire cadet corps. That's senseless. Who do you talk to, Chief? Do you have any advisors? Anyway, I'm concerned about the trauma this may impose upon these cops and robbers, kids, because that's the stage they're in now, cops and robbers, cowboys, and Indians. Pastor Q. Jennings, followed by Mariela Selva and Audrey George. Good morning. Good morning. Today is World Refugee Day. There's an incident in which a, a Syrian teen refugee threw gasoline over his body just recently and lit himself on fire. He died one week later because of desperation. It kind of reminds me of our community. Bob Marley sang a song called, Who Feels It Knows It. We feel it and we know it. My question to you is how do you feel today? And what do you feel today? Well, here's what we feel. We come here in the context of Charlena Lyles, who was shot down this past weekend by Seattle police when she called. She was mentally ill. They knew it. She called to receive assistance. She was pregnant. And in the presence of her 10-year-old kid and another kid, she was gunned down and killed. They said she had a knife. We come here in the context of mass incarceration. We come here in the context of unjust sentencing laws as it relates to the war on drugs. Always, always black folks get always, we always get the bad end of the stick on these policies. We come here in the context of broken windows policies which justify stop and frisk, AKA racial profiling. We come here in the context of knowing whatever happened to Waukesha Wilson, we will never know because her mama's sitting right there. We come here today with the backdrop that that is why last week we said law enforcement should not be first responders for the mentally ill. We come here today to say that is also, that also this system is not broken, it is flawed by design. Finally, uh, in, in appealing to the United Nations in 1951 in a document called We Charge Genocide, W.E.B. Du Bois said, once the classic method of lynching was the rope, now it's the policeman's bullet. We charge genocide.
Thank you. Mariela Salva. Excellent. Thank you. Protection to us all, loved ones. Protection to us all, loved ones. Love to Pedro Echeverria. Presente. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, Father, for they know very well what you do. Pedro Echeverria, presente. We take this moment to be present with the elder who was shot by LAPD last night. One of many families who calls unknowingly because we've been trained to call 911 since we were little, little boys and girls and kids because that's what they trained us in the education system. That is also part of the system. In the violence that we experience in our homes, there are solutions for how to take care of the hurt and pain that we feel ancestrally passed on generation to generation. And indeed, we have violence between us, brothers, sisters, relatives. We lift your name. You have not been named yet. I read the articles. We lift your name here. Pedro Echeverria and the elder. We're here. We, next, we have Audrey George and one late comment card, Mr. Jenkins. How is it that Chief Beck can just sit there so unruffled and calm while reporting to the commission? He knows how much of the community and all of the commissioners have grown so complacent as a result of the mind-numbing and unchecked use of force, atrocities that we hear about week after week after week. The constancy of these messages actually works for Chief Beck. We hear about Pedro Echeverria. We hear about the elder. So last week's protests and inquiries about incidents are subdued, as are those from the week before, and so on. But we won't let you forget We'll keep raising those names like Ezel Ford, Charlie Africa, and Wakisha Wilson. We still remember Kevin Ferguson, even though that was a while ago. Why have we not heard one word about his discipline? Was he fired? How could he have shot off his gun in front of all those children, and nothing, even while he was off duty, and nothing come of it? All of the commissioners should take a hard look at their complicity in failing to hold the LAPD accountable. Step down. You are not doing any good, and possibly your complacency and your complicity is causing more harm than you realize. Mr. Jenkins. Prentice Jenkins, Peace Between Residents and Police. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. President Soberoff, I'm sorry. <laughs> President Johnson, Vice President Soberoff, Chief, Board. Uh, Chief, I'd like to ask you, um, I'm a bicycle rider, and I ride my bicycle every day. And trust me, it's dangerous out there. I've been hit twice, and I only ride on the sidewalk. It wasn't until I crossed the street that I got hit twice. We need more uh, police officers patrolling uh, places like 7th and Baudry. 7th and uh, as a bicycle rider. I'm, I'm talking as a bicycle rider. 
I see the intimidation that motorists use when they intimidate pedestrians, they intimidate bicycle riders, they block the, uh, the ramp as you come up, you're crossing the street, they'll try and block the ramp. It's, it's called motorist intimidation of pedestrians and bicycle riders. And there's some crazy motorists out there. I've seen motorists, b bicycle riders who ride in the street. Trust me, if I was riding in the street, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. I'd be in a graveyard somewhere. That's how crazy some motorists is. And don't get me wrong, there are crazy bicycle riders out there too. Jump out in the street on a red light, just missed, just, a truck just missed them. I witness it and I put my, my, my phone and videotape everywhere I go. I put it on the front of my bike and I videotape. I have videotape of how crazy motorists are. We need officers watching these, these individuals on 7th and, and uh, uh, Broadway. I mean, it's really crazy on 7th and Broadway because they took one of their lanes away. That's scary. Once you took their lane away, they, you really pissed them off. You piss motorists off when you take their lanes away. They took their lane away and made it, uh, put it together for, uh, uh, I guess you can, you, you can sit down and eat and stuff like that, but help us out, Chief. That was our final comment card. We're now on number four, public comment. We have six comment cards, seven comment cards, starting with Michael Novick, followed by Mr. Jenkins, Tut Hayes, and Matt Frommel. Um, I'd appreciate an answer to the question I'm going to raise. I know that uh, Mr. Soboroff responded to Tut Hayes about the uh, stripping of the helicopter, so I think that you can take the uh, opportunity to respond to me. Uh, um, City of Los Angeles has a bid in for the Olympics, and uh, uh, I think they were asking for 2024. It looks like they might get 2028. But as part of that bid, the city is asking the uh, uh, federal government to designate uh, the Olympics as a national security event so that the federal government will be responsible for law enforcement and security measures during the period of the Olympics in order to balance the books and, and make it not uh, too costly for the city to hold them. Uh, and so my question to the police commission is whether you signed off on that idea that the federal government would come in uh, and take over law enforcement responsibilities and security for the Olympics. And if not, why not? And if you did, when you held that in the public and got public comment on it. And uh, if you uh, haven't heard about that, then I would ask you why you haven't. And uh, so I'd like an answer to those questions before I sit down. Those are, not a minute. those are not agendized items, so we can't comment on it. There's been a number of times where the Olympics uh, have, have been on the agenda, and I imagine they will be in the future as well, depending on whether or not we are granted the Olympics in September. So the, uh, the uh, uh, city uh, uh, authorization to the mayor to negotiate for the Olympics was for 2024. It seems pretty clear now that the way the International Olympic Committee is planning is to give it 2024 to uh, Paris and to vote this year to give 2028, although that's never been done before, to uh, LA. But LA has no authorization for 2028, so I would challenge the police commission to immediately conduct public hearings on the question of federalizing law enforcement during the Olympics, because that will bring ICE in, that will bring the Border Patrol in, that will bring the FBI in, NCIS, every federal agency that has police will be in charge of the city of Los Angeles for the duration of those Olympic Games. Mr. Jenkins? Prentice Jenkins, Peace Between Residents and Police. Uh, it gives me great special pleasure to see how people are unaware of what's about to happen to them. Quote, Adolf Hitler. We've got a psycho sitting at the head of the government now, and we fight each other. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. I read The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shire, a man who was sitting on the sports plans behind Hitler as he gave his speech. So this man knows what he's talking about. And I recognize one thing about The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. It is a blueprint on how to potentially take over the world. This man de gives detail on how to take over the world. Anybody can use it. Hitler's dead, but his philosophy isn't. And that fool in the White House, I never call him president because he hacked the election. That fool in the White House read the rise and fall of the Third Reich. And that idiot is about to continue Hitler's, uh, uh, Hitler's philosophy. What we need to do is be vigilant 
Because that's what, that's, what, that's what Hitler said. They ain't, they ain't got a clue what's about to happen to them. The, the communists were fighting the socialists. The liberals were fighting the, the, uh, the liberals were fighting the conservatives. While they were all fighting, Hitler slipped in there. And when Hitler got in there, he put them all in the, camp, in the concentration camps. He put socialists, communists, liberals, conservatives, stuck them all in the concentration camps as they fought each other. Trust me, we must be vigilant because something's on its way. I made eight observations in this commission. Seven came true. They're not predictions, they're observations. Only one didn't. That was when I said they'll arrest uh, Trump uh, before he takes inauguration. That didn't come true, but these other seven did. So Mr. Jenkins knows what he's talking about. Mr. Tut Hayes, followed by Matt Frommel, Mariela Selva, and Kirby Howell. Here's a psychological term I'd like to run by you. It's a how to fix children. When you say that because some one, two, three, five, seven of you did something, you're all likely to be guilty of the same kind of behavior. Well, that's called profiling racially. One black person does something, they're all like that. They all do that. That's the impression they're going to get. They're going to think that if one of us does something, we're all going to be blamed or criticized or suspected of doing the same thing. Now, you're adults, and I would hope some of you took some classes in school about psychology, maybe not child, child psychology, but psychology. You have to recognize that you can't tar everyone with the same brush. So if you call all these children and all their parents and lecture them, make them go to a graduation because of what some of them did, several of them did, that lets them believe you think they're all suspected of being the same kind of juvenile delinquents. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do, and I have no idea why this board did not have something on the agenda relative to getting a report more extensive than the chief provided on this. What are you going to do top to bottom on this? That's what you should be trying to find out, but no, you did not. You allow them to allow this to just wallow as it is, let the chief determine what he thinks he ought to do without any advice of any experts in the areas of how you treat children. Matt Fromell. Um, there's an Upton Sinclair quote that I feel like very well characterizes the institution of policing. It's that it's near impossible to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. And the problem here is that we think that policing is the solution, right? I, I would like to talk to my fellow white friend over here um, who's very comfortable with German. Uh, your comments are ignorant. Um, and I think that's nice. And I have black pa friends pause too. The that's clock. great. Pause the clock, please. Pause the clock, please. <clears throat> um, right. In the same way you probably wouldn't show up to the Nuremberg trials and say as a German that the Nazis treated you nicely too. So, um, I would say that when you try to hold the police accountable, uh, I, I've had very nice experiences with police my, my entire life, right? Until I started trying to hold them accountable. And that includes filming them, that includes being here, uh, the intimidation in this room. I'd love to play you a clip as well uh, from Beverly Hills Police Department that I took about a month ago. Can I help you? No. Are you photographing this? Yes. Okay, well, I'll turn around and go away. It's none of your business. Is it? Are you, are you press? No. no. Okay, yeah. I think I have a legal right to film. No, you don't. Honestly, you don't. Oh, I don't? No, you don't. Really? And it's, all, it's only a traffic accident. So if you were here for okay. a traffic accident, do you have film for it? We'd love to see it. I don't, know. Okay. That's what's, what it's what's your name? Hamilton? Hamilton, yeah. What's your uh, number? Badge number? 883. 883? So I'm just confirming that I have no legal right to film this. No, you have because it doesn't concern you, does it? I don't care. You can photograph the whole thing if you want to. I don't, I oh, so I do have a legal right to do it. 
I don't think you do, but it doesn't matter. You can I think you do, because I think that's how we've gotten okay. a lot of videos of okay. police officers killing people, right? I mean... Doing what? Killing yeah. people. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, every eight hours, but... So I would challenge you, even if you have only positive feelings for police officers, just film some police stops and, and see how people treat you. See how they laugh at you, see how they mock you. And that's something that, that shouldn't require, you know, hate to, to film to keep people accountable. You know, we've gotten, God bless you. I really hope he does. Um, and I'm an atheist. I, uh, you know, I think that getting, I think that just filming them is a constitutional right. And I, and I challenge you to do that and then come back here after about 10 times and tell me how you feel about the police um, and their accountability uh, to you and to the rest of the community. Because justice for some people is not justice at all. Maria Lazava followed by Kirby Howell. The truth shall set us free. The truth is free. The truth community tuning in and listening deep is that I met Pedro Echeverria late April in my neighborhood. It was a divine connection. I put it out in the universe that I wanted to work with youth in my neighborhood, both gang and non-gang affiliated. Youth in my neighborhood because in my neighborhood we're all affiliated with each other. We're all a big family, and these are our realities. Pedro put it out there that in the universe, too, that he wanted to meet somebody who could help him with police harassment that he was living on a daily basis as a brown youth, like black and brown youth all through these lands. Our transformational journey is divine and it continues till this day and on. Pedro has a bright, 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 bright light and a bright, bright, bright future. He was meant to survive the four gunshots by LAPD Hollenbeck Division that went to murder Pedro and did not murder him because there was divine intervention. Pedro vive. He lives to tell the stories of all our relatives shot, killed by police in all the violent ways that it happens every eight hours across these lands. And we need to keep Pedro alive because when they failed to kill him, they put custody over his body in order to continue controlling his body and the story. So we sounded the alarms. Our last three cards are Kirby Howell, Ahmed Khan, and DA. I think there's a, um, a dark irony in the fact that Chief Beck said that he felt like a disappointed father because of some of the cadets. Um, when we sit here, when Wakisha Wilson's mother sits here, her actual mother sits here every single week looking for justice. So it's interesting that he says that he felt a disappointment. Obviously, I can't speak to him because he scampered out of the room. Um, but it's interesting that he said that he felt a disappointment in those cadets, but shows no disappointment in the officers that are directly responsible for the death of Wakisha Wilson. No responsibility, no accountability, no shame. But yet he feels a, a, a disappointment like a father, which is, which is actually disgusting to say in this environment. Um, he's not fit to be the chief of police. He's completely unfit. I mean, an example of that, which I didn't even know until I walked into this room, is the fact that a 75-year-old man with a knife was killed. A 75-year-old man with a knife was killed, survived, or was shot by police. That's unbelievable. That, that, that shows absolutely not a single modicum of de-escalation whatsoever. 
Also, these materials that we have every single week, your policies directly affect black and brown people, and these materials are only in English. These materials should also be in Spanish as well as the comment cards, because your policies directly affect black and brown people, therefore your materials should be, a people should be able to comprehend that. It is disrespectful, and it is also, it is wildly disrespectful that these materials are not in Spanish also. You just need to do a second printout on this exact same sheet so your materials are also in Spanish because you are alienating people that your policies directly affect and not only affect, who your policies kill. Thank you. Ahmed Khan and last DA. As of uh, this morning, June 20th, 563 people have been murdered by the cops in the United States in 2017. So bringing down the math, and it's disgusting to look at it in the context of math, that it is every seven hours and 42 minutes somebody is being murdered by cops in, the, in these United States. Um, I was reminded, some of us were in Detroit recently at a conference, and I just want to pay my and honor Lisa Hines, who's amongst us as well. And I was honored to meet a group of parents. It's Families United in Justice. And there was about over a dozen group of parents who were in Detroit, and each one of them had lost a child to a police murder. And I think many a times we, we rethink that why are we in these forums, that why are we wasting our time, it is really frustrating. But I think I sought I, my strength from these parents. I had an opportunity, I had an honor to sit and talk to some of them as well. And I think the point that they drove home was that wherever we are, whoever we are, however we speak, whatever we sp say, we have to speak, we have to stand up, we have to expose, we have to make it public. We have to speak about the cruelty of the system. I wasn't here when uh, Beck spoke about as a parent, but I think if we flip the script in white supremacy, he was speaking as a white daddy. He was speaking as a white man who claims the space, who claims the control, who claims the space that this is his playground. The woman over there was speaking about Second World War. It wasn't a world war, it was a white man's war. None of the people, none of the people, I grew up in Pakistan, I'm an immigrant from Pakistan, none of the people in the, in the brown and the black world had any say in these so-called global conflicts, right? So that war at home continues. We continue to be murdered. I mean, if we have any trust that this system can be... Our last be final itself, comment card on this is DA. by design, and we have to dismantle and abolish it. me to speak without yelling if I go a couple seconds past two minutes. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Greetings, my name is DA. I'm a local Rastafarian. Stop LAPD spying. What are the ignorant children clinging to who continue to support racist policing? They want to feel superior without actually being superior. Desperate to feel powerful again, Commissioner Tifang thought he could openly lie under oath at Baba Keeley's trial and, and get away with it like it was a hundred years ago. Meanwhile, through the press conference, ABC, NBC, CBS, KPCC, and thousands or millions of, of people are crushing his, his his uh, credibility and political power in the all-important court of public opinion. China is now the premier superpower, whether you throw a tantrum or not. Tifink and his clan cling to racist policing because he also lacks intellectual power, responding to philosophical debate with violence and petty antagonism like an ignorant child. LAPD attempted to assassinate me on May 1st at 2 a.m. with a car that sideswiped me in the Uber car I was sleeping in outside of 5243 Washington Boulevard in L.A. The truly tragic epidemic of, of opio opioid deaths amongst middle-aged whites largely emanates from the... the the despair of a collapsing culture in which white supremacist feelings are the fantasy basis for some white self-esteem, identity, and invincible sense of security. 
White supremacy has never been a real long-term path to supporting those feelings that should be self-generated. White supremacy can sometimes stifle the inspiration for personal intellectual development. It was not until the 1870s, just two, two lifetimes ago, that Europe was finally able to penetrate Central Africa. The colonizing that resulted helped to inspire a chauvinism movement in Germany under Kaiser Wilhelm, a precursor to the Nazi racism of the 1930s. Located in modern-day Tanzania, the German-African colony was a source of self-esteem for Germans and was a psychological blow to lose it just 43 years later after World War I. And that humbling blow contributed to German resentment thereby to World War II. Historically, in the Middle Ages, Germans would copy the contents of books from the Moors who were black on mathematics and medicine and then burn the originals to try and hide that history. The Moors started the first universities in Europe and ruled much of southern Europe for 800 years. Red Chief Hunt and other black police agents are clinging to the security of Massa's house. Many such people act against their own interests because of deprivation in childhood, coupled with the false emotional imagery that says that whites are needed in order to overcome whatever is missing in childhood. Uh, people begin to believe that order requires being white. It is not. Order requires that you be in control of your own life. That false fantasy imagery often causes such black police agents to overlook the fact that racist whites brought in crack to the black community and other tools of forced underdevelopment that often cause that deprivation in black police agents' childhoods. There's a fantasy that says that tricking the natives was a source for racist colonial power. Not. There's no mystique to police agents trying to make petty antagonisms in support of racist policing. Racist empire effectively puts a gun to people's head and says, you better say I'm smart. You better say I'm civilized. Get up, stand up against the fantasy life that is white supremacy. No ban. No wall, no stop and frisk. No ban, no wall, no stop and frisk. No ban, no wall, no stop and frisk. That was our final comment on public comment. We're now at item number five, closed session. We have three comment cards for 5A1. Call them, please. Michael Novick, followed by Mariela Saba and Brian Newton. So you have... Uh, two officer-involved shootings involving, I don't know how many total officers, about f six or seven officers and a uh, tactical unauthorized discharge or something like that. I don't know what the abbreviation stands for exactly, but uh, you know, week after week you come here and you go into executive session and you deal with two or three officer-involved shootings or uh, dog uh, attacks or other uh, crimes by the police and you come back out and you rubber stamp them and you say that they were within policy. So I just want to point out that, you know, it looks like you might be catching up a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure how that happened, because usually you're about a year behind, and these are events from, uh, I think, August. So uh, you must be uh, increasing the number of uh, cases that you deal with week by week. But uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, you need to uh, understand that uh, if you're not holding uh, the police accountable, the community is going to hold you accountable. Mariela Saba. After they shot Pedro four times, mostly from the back, two officers, uh, execution style. Uh, Darlene, I lift your name in our neighborhood and we lift protection for her and the family that witnessed this uh, violent trauma in our neighborhood. After they, she was able to intervene, um, LAPD kept his body there for 15 to 20 minutes. What they typically do is bleed out the youth so they die if they didn't shoot, um, murder them from the bullet wounds, they bleed them out to die. We live, we live three blocks from the fire department and they block the paramedics. Mama Elvira, we lift up your name. She was running to the scene. She called me to come, and I was far, and I went into immediate prayer. I have not left Pedro's hospital bedside, but the danger, my friends, community listening, is that LAPD and the sheriffs have also not left his hospital bedside. We need to continue to sound the alarms of health, the alarms of safety, the alarms of truth, the alarms of respect, the alarms of dignity, the alarms of peace, the alarms of love. We've been working to keep Pedro alive in community prayer, thousands and thousands and thousands, so he can live to tell the truth and the story of all of us, because he's meant to do that good, good hard work on this land. We need community health advocates, folks, to connect with the LACUSC and tell them to keep Pedro alive and keep Pedro free. They put custody on his body to keep controlling the narrative, to control the body. And as the father and mother knew in their gut heart 
They said if they didn't kill him at 3 o'clock, they would kill him in the hospital. That is the current status of our relative. We need to lift up the truth, the prayers. Keep Pedro alive. Keep Pedro free. We're united and strong, my family, my relatives. This is transformation in our communities. We'll each do our part. Much love to us, transformation. These are temporary. These are temporary. Remember Our final truth. comment card, Brian Newton. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm heard. Thank you so much, loved ones. Thank you. Ms. Hines, we, we have one more speaker, and I'm happy to talk to you right, right after. I'm happy to talk to you privately right after, right after the meeting. I'm happy to speak with you privately right after the meeting. Let's uh, let's let's call the final speaker. Measure sixty-four. Brian Newton. C. Measure C. Final call. This is actually really important. So, all right, it's Father's Day. Wakisha Wilson. Wakisha Wilson. Wakisha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. All right. So it was Father's Day just passed, and this is actually very relevant that Miss Waukesha's mother just was here. And it is my great shame that I have to report to you all that my father was on LAPD for 25 years. I'm the son of a police officer. I know you people. I went, I went to your academies. I went to your concerts. I went to your barbecues and your bingos and your celebrity golf tournaments. I know you people. I grew up with you people. And I had that talk, the talk that I'm unfortunately like every black person in this fucking country has to have. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm shaking right now because I just had to witness this. It is my shame that I have to witness this that I have to be the son of a police officer who gave me that talk that told me how to respond to police officers. People in badges who are supposed to protect us, and they don't. What, they protect white supremacy and property. That's what they're protecting, and we're all comparable to that. And, and my dad went in joining law enforcement with the assumption that he'd change it from the inside. That's not how this stuff works. It's a foolish assumption. I know many of you probably believe that. People who carry badges, people of color, women, you think you're going to change it from the inside. It doesn't happen that way. It has to be from the ground up. It has to be supporting the community or nobody else. I, I can't. I, I'm disgusted with it, especially after what happened with Philando. And everything that goes on in this country, there's no justice. <laughs> we can't pretend that there is anymore. I, I, I mean, I'm nervous, but I'm also enraged, and I can't hide that anymore. So it's just... I, I'll be speaking out going forward. I know I've been here for a while and just kind of watching and laying out the scene of land because it's not necessarily my voice, it's our voice. 
and I just had to say that. Sorry. The Board of Police Commissioner, uh, the Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss items 5A1 and 2 and 3 in accordance with Government Code 54957. The Board of Police Commissioners has concluded its work in closed session. We are back in open session. In closed session, item 5A1 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. In closed session, item 5A2 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. In closed session, item 5A3 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. Mr. Vice President, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Mr. My name is Eric. My name is May. We, we are, are in Chinatown. Chinatown. You're, You're watching, watching LA City View. View. Channel 35. Our city, our channel. channel.